Hello once again, party people. Uh, or, or not party people, as the case may be. We are here to have a wee chat to you again about the lifestyles of the rich and the famous. Although today we're taking a slightly different tack and uh, jetting off to a different part of the world, as is entirely appropriate. We're going to have a little bit of a talk about the lifestyle of Muhammad VI. Rest assured, it is royal. Now, the first question some of you might be asking yourselves is, who exactly is this man? And uh, why do we want to chat about his lavish lifestyle? Well, I'll tell you. Muhammad VI is the current king of Morocco. And before we delve into a couple of absolutely fascinating points about his incredible lifestyle and the uh, interesting uh, reforms and various changes to the regime in his kingdom that have happened over the time of his rule since 1999, we should probably just briefly delve into the country itself. Now, Morocco is the northwesternmost country in the Maghreb region of North Africa. And uh, for me, certainly, I've always found it an absolutely fascinating place. It's, it's a real melting pot, a, a cultural mix of uh, Berber, Arab and European cultures. The capital is Rabat, but the largest city is Casablanca, a name that might be familiar to you. Um, another really prominent city in the place is one known as Tangier, which, uh, fingers crossed, maybe we'll have a chat about one day. Because my goodness, the literature and culture and food that has sprung out of that city is absolutely amazing. But back to the royal himself. As I mentioned before, he ascended to the throne on uh, the 23rd of July in 1999, uh, succeeding the death of his father, King Hassan II. Now, he has been known uh, somewhat as a reformer. The reform of the family code, the Mudawana, uh, has, le uh, has led to granting women more power. And um, in reaction to some disturbances in 2011, uh, you know, Morocco's own little version of the Arab Spring, uh, in response, Muhammad has promulgated a program of reform and introduced a new constitution. And these were passed by public referendum in that same year. But um, enough of the boring stuff, enough of the veggies. Let's get into the luxury. Muhammad VI is indisputably the richest king in Africa. Fifth in general in terms of wealth in the African continent with a fortune anywhere rated anywhere between two to five billion dollars and he's got it all locked down now uh, what does a man with this kind of wealth and access to a total of something like 21 palaces uh spend his money on well he's got a lot of companies a lot of irons in the fire so to speak and uh they have some incredible monopolies but let's get to the really fun stuff let's talk about the cars Probably one of the more recent, uh, outrageously expensive adventures that the King of Morocco has taken his car on is that uh, he flew his Aston Martin DB7 from Rabat, Morocco to UK so that it could be repaired at an Aston Martin workshop. Now, I don't know about you guys, but um, my little Nissan Bluebird, if I ever thought that I would... <laughs> uh, if it ever crossed my mind to... Uh, fly it over to Japan just to repair the uh, slightly cracked windscreen, I think I would be called insane. But then again, I wasn't born into incredible wealth and luxury. Let's revel a bit more, shall we? Of course, we're talking about all the uh, usually suspected brands, Audi, Maybach, etc. And the collection overall may reach up to 600 cars. Let's elaborate on the palaces a little more, shall we? King Mohammed has bolt holes all over the world. Twelve royal palaces, and of course, um, these aren't confined to the country of Morocco, as I mentioned before. One of the more conspicuous ones is in the French village of Bats. Another recent purchase occurred uh, in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic. It was reported that Mohammed VI purchased an 80 million euro mansion in Paris, uh, understandably close to the Eiffel Tower, and bought from the Saudi royal family. Let's bring things back into the realm of seriousness for a second, because of course, when you're born into great power and great luxury, there comes with it enormous responsibility. I can't quite remember where that phrase came from. Let's talk a little bit about the reforms that Muhammad VI has instituted. And these happened very soon after acquiring his sovereignty. 
He addressed his people via electronic media and promised to improve the human rights records in Morocco. His father has this had, or I should say had, had a somewhat mixed message. And in fact, Muhammad VI has earned the title Guardian of the Poor for making the fight against poverty. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Morocco still ranks fairly low in these indexes, something that uh, is one of his major priorities. He made political and economic changes and has uh, undertaken investigations into the human rights abuses which occurred during his father's rules. And interestingly enough, this has resulted that uh, this has resulted in the fact that he is the sovereign of one of the most stable constitutional monarchies, certainly in the uh, African diaspora. That being said, the crazy amount of spending isn't too far away. You can be lifting the people up with one hand and making it rain with the other. The daily operating budget of his main palace is estimated to be around $960,000. A prominent expenses including that of clothes and, uh, you guessed it, car repair. And point number four, let's have a wee chat about the man himself. I mean, after all, all the fame and trappings of wealth and official decisions while made as a ruler don't always give you an accurate depiction of the person themselves. Who is Muhammad VI? What does he get up to? His father was keen on giving him a religious and political education from an early age. And actually, at the age of four, he started attending the Quranic school at the royal palace. He completed his first primary and secondary studies at uh, Collège Royal. Remember uh, very much that um, Morocco has been hugely influenced by French colonialism. He attained his baccalaureate in 1981 and then gained a bachelor's degree in law at the Muhammad V University at Agdal in 1985. He's also frequented the Imperial College and University of Rabat. He's been uh, increasingly gaining learning in um, political science and in the late 80s uh, also studied in France and as well in Brussels with Jacques Delors, then president of the European Commission. He's a well-educated guy. He also has a PhD in law with distinction, which he got in 1993, and that was from the uh, French University of Nice, Sophia Antipolis. Nonetheless, huh, like many princelings during these years, he gained a bit of a reputation as a playboy. He settled down somewhat since then. In 2002, he married Salma Benani in Rabat, and uh, she was granted the personal title of princess with the title of Her Royal Highness on her marriage, and they have two children. So, that's probably another little bit of time spent in the company of some of the world's most fabulous and interesting people. And I really find it interesting talking about people who are born into great wealth, seeing how they use it, and the different sets of um, hurdles that they have to uh, jump over. Because, you know, things are always relative. You're born into great wealth. It doesn't immediately mean that everything is served to you on a silver platter, no matter how much that might seem to be the case. And I'm always fascinated by hereditary monarchies. So, here's a question for you guys. If you had to be born into a royal family, which would it be? Uh, hint, hint, totally go for Liechtenstein. That's definitely my favorite. And uh, something else to ponder and write down in the comments section down below, whilst also, Natch, hitting the like and subscribe button and sharing this video with all your family and friends, anyone who might be interested. Here's your second question. If you had to drive one car for the rest of your life, and let's just put aside the fact that uh, His Royal Highness Muhammad VI has probably about 600, what kind of car would it be? Alrighty, see you all around. Who knows what we're going to be talking about next time. Peace out.